Adenosine triphosphate is a nucleoside triphosphate used in cells as a coenzyme often called the molecular unit of currency of intracellular energy transfer. ATP transports chemical energy within cells for metabolism. It is one of the end products of photophosphorylation, cellular respiration, and fermentation and used by enzymes and structural proteins in many cellular processes, including biosynthetic reactions, motility, and cell division. One molecule of ATP contains three phosphate groups, and it is produced by a wide variety of enzymes, including ATP synthase from adenosine diphosphate or adenosine monophosphate and various phosphate group donors. Substrate level phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation in cellular respiration, and photophosphorylation in photosynthesis are three major mechanisms of ATP biosynthesis. Metabolic processes that use ATP as an energy source convert it back into its precursors. ATP is therefore continuously recycled in organisms. The human body, which on average contains only 250 grams of ATP, turns over its own body weight equivalent in ATP each day. ATP is used as a substrate in signal transduction pathways by kinases that phosphorylate proteins and lipids. It is also used by adenylate cyclase, which uses ATP to produce the second messenger molecule cyclic AMP. The ratio between ATP and AMP is used as a way for a cell to sense how much energy is available and control the metabolic pathways that produce and consume ATP. Apart from its roles in signaling and energy metabolism, ATP is also incorporated into nucleic acids by polymerases in the process of transcription. ATP is the neurotransmitter believed to signal the sense of taste. The structure of this molecule consists of a purine base attached by the 9 nitrogen atom to the 1 carbon atom of a pentose sugar. Three phosphate groups are attached at the 5 carbon atom of the pentose sugar. It is the addition and removal of these phosphate groups that interconvert ATP, ADP and AMP. When ATP is used in DNA synthesis, the ribose sugar is first converted to deoxyribose by ribonucleotide reductase. ATP was discovered in 1929 by Carl Lohmann, and independently by Cyrus Fisk and Yella Pregada Seberau of Harvard Medical School. But its correct structure was not determined until some years later. It was proposed to be the intermediary molecule between energy yielding and energy requiring reactions in cells by Fritz Albert Lippmann in 1941. It was first artificially synthesized by Alexander Todd in 1948. Physical and Chemical Properties ATP consists of adenosine, composed of an adenine ring and a ribose sugar, and three phosphate groups. The phosphoryl groups, starting with the group closest to the ribose, are referred to as the alpha, beta, and gamma phosphates. Consequently, it is closely related to the adenosine nucleotide, a monomer of RNA. ATP is highly soluble in water and is quite stable in solutions between pH 6.8 and 7.4, but is rapidly hydrolyzed at extreme pH. Consequently, ATP is best stored as an anhydrous salt. ATP is an unstable molecule in unbuffered water, in which it hydrolyzes to ADP and phosphate. This is because the strength of the bonds between the phosphate groups in ATP is less than the strength of the hydrogen bonds between its products and water. Thus, if ATP and ADP are in chemical equilibrium in water, almost all of the ATP will eventually be converted to ADP. A system that is far from equilibrium contains Gibbs free energy, and is capable of doing work. Living cells maintain the ratio of ATP to ADP used at a point 10 orders of magnitude from equilibrium, with ATP concentrations fivefold higher than the concentration of ADP. This displacement from equilibrium means that the hydrolysis of ATP in the cell releases a large amount of free energy. 
Two phosphoranhydride bonds in an ATP molecule are responsible for the high energy content of this molecule. In the context of biochemical reactions, these anhydride bonds are frequently, and sometimes controversially, referred to as high energy bonds. Energy stored in ATP may be released upon hydrolysis of the anhydride bonds. The primary phosphate group on the ATP molecule that is hydrolyzed when energy is needed to drive anabolic reactions is the gamma phosphate group. Located the farthest from the ribose sugar, it has a higher energy of hydrolysis than either the alpha or beta phosphate. The bonds formed after hydrolysis, or the phosphorylation of a residue by ATP, are lower in energy than the phosphoranhydride bonds of ATP. During enzyme-catalyzed hydrolysis of ATP or phosphorylation by ATP, the available free energy can be harnessed by a living system to do work. Any unstable system of potentially reactive molecules could potentially serve as a way of storing free energy. If the cell maintained their concentration far from the equilibrium point of the reaction, however, as is the case with most polymeric biomolecules, the breakdown of RNA, DNA, and ATP into simpler monomers is driven by both energy release and entropy increase considerations in both standard concentrations, and also those concentrations encountered within the cell. The standard amount of energy released from hydrolysis of ATP can be calculated from the changes in energy under non-natural conditions, then correcting to biological concentrations. The net change in heat energy at standard temperature and pressure of the decomposition of ATP into hydrated ADP and hydrated inorganic phosphates, minus 30.5 kJ per mole, with a change in free energy of 3.4 kJ per mole. The energy released by cleaving either a phosphate or pyrophosphate unit from ATP at standard state of YMR, ATP plus H2O ADP plus by delta G equals minus 30.5 kJ per mole ATP plus H2O amp plus PPI delta G equals minus 45.6 kJ per mole. These values can be used to calculate the change in energy under physiological conditions and the cellular ATP ADP ratio. However, a more representative value called the energy charge is increasingly being employed. The values given for the Gibbs free energy for this reaction are dependent on a number of factors, including overall ionic strength and the presence of alkaline earth metal ions such as Mg2+, and California2+. Under typical cellular conditions, delta G is approximately minus 57 kJ per mole. Ionization in biological systems ATP has multiple groups with different acid dissociation constants. In neutral solution, ATP as ionized exists mostly as ATP4- with a small proportion of ATP3-. As ATP has several negatively charged groups in neutral solution, it can chelate metals with very high affinity. The binding constant for various metal ions are as Mg2+, Na+, California2+, K+, Senior2+, and Li+. Due to the strength of these interactions, ATP exists in a cell mostly in a complex with Mg2+. Biosynthesis the ATP concentration inside the cell is typically 1 to 10 mm. ATP can be produced by redox reactions using simple and complex sugars or lipids as an energy source. For complex fuels to be synthesized into ATP, they first need to be broken down into smaller, more simple molecules. Carbohydrates are hydrolyzed into simple sugars, such as glucose and fructose. Fats are metabolized to give fatty acids and glycerol. The overall process of oxidizing glucose to carbon dioxide is known as cellular respiration and can produce about 30 molecules of ATP from a single molecule of glucose. ATP can be produced by a number of distinct cellular processes. The three main pathways used to generate energy in eukaryotic organisms are glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, 
both components of cellular respiration, and beta-oxidation. The majority of this ATP production by a non-photosynthetic aerobic eukaryote takes place in the mitochondria, which can make up nearly 25% of the total volume of a typical cell. Glycolysis in glycolysis, glucose and glycerol are metabolized to pyruvate via the glycolytic pathway. In most organisms, this process occurs in the cytosol, but in some protozoa such as the kinetoplastids, this is carried out in a specialized organelle called the glycosome. Glycolysis generates a net two molecules of ATP through substrate phosphorylation catalyzed by two enzymes, PGK and pyruvate kinase. Two molecules of NADH are also produced, which can be oxidized via the electron transport chain and result in the generation of additional ATP by ATP synthase. The pyruvate generated as an end product of glycolysis is a substrate for the Krebs cycle. Glucose in the mitochondrion pyruvate is oxidized by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex to acetyl group which is fully oxidized to carbon dioxide by the citric acid cycle. Every turn of the citric acid cycle produces two molecules of carbon dioxide, one molecule of the ATP equivalent guanos in a triphosphate through substrate level phosphorylation catalyzed by succinyl coa synthetase three molecules of the reduced coenzyme NADH, and one molecule of the reduced coenzyme FADH2. Both of these latter molecules are recycled to their oxidized states via the electron transport chain, which generates additional ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. The oxidation of an NADH molecule results in the synthesis of two 3, ATP molecules, and the oxidation of one FADH2 yields between one 2, ATP molecules. The majority of cellular ATP is generated by this process, although the citric acid cycle itself does not involve molecular oxygen. It is an obligately aerobic process because O2 is needed to recycle the reduced NADH and FADH2 to their oxidized states. In the absence of oxygen the citric acid cycle will cease to function due to the lack of available NAD plus and FAD. The generation of ATP by the mitochondrion from cytosolic NADH relies on the malate aspartate shuttle because the inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to NADH and NAD+. Instead of transferring the generated NADH, a malate dehydrogenase enzyme converts oxaloacetate to malate, which is translocated to the mitochondrial matrix. Another malate dehydrogenase catalyzed reaction occurs in the opposite direction, producing oxaloacetate and NADH from the newly transported malate and the mitochondrion's interior store of NAD+. A transaminase converts the oxaloacetate to aspartate for transport back across the membrane and into the intermembrane space. In oxidative phosphorylation, the passage of electrons from NADH and FADH2 through the electron transport chain powers the pumping of protons out of the mitochondrial matrix and into the intermembrane space. This creates a proton motive force that is the net effect of a pH gradient and an electric potential gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Flow of protons down this potential gradient, that is, from the intermembrane space to the matrix, provides the driving force for ATP synthesis by ATP synthase. This enzyme contains a rotor subunit that physically rotates relative to the static portions of the protein during ATP synthesis. Most of the ATP synthesized in the mitochondria will be used for cellular processes in the cytosol, thus it must be exported from its site of synthesis in the mitochondrial matrix. The inner membrane contains an antiporter, the ADP, ATP translocase which is an integral membrane protein used to exchange newly synthesized ATP in the matrix for ADP in the intermembrane space. 
This translocase is driven by the membrane potential, as it results in the movement of about four negative charges out of the mitochondrial membrane in exchange for three negative charges moved inside. However, it is also necessary to transport phosphate into the mitochondrion. The phosphate carrier moves a proton in with each phosphate, partially dissipating the proton gradient. Beta-oxidation fatty acids can also be broken down to acetyl-CoA by beta-oxidation. Each round of this cycle reduces the length of the acyl chain by two carbon atoms and produces one NADH and one FADH2 molecule, which are used to generate ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. Because NADH and FADH2 are energy-rich molecules, dozens of ATP molecules can be generated by the beta-oxidation of a single long acyl chain. The high energy yield of this process and the compact storage of fat explain why it is the most dense source of dietary calories. Fermentation Fermentation entails the generation of energy via the process of substrate-level phosphorylation in the absence of a respiratory electron transport chain. In most eukaryotes, glucose is used as both an energy store and an electron donor. The equation for the oxidation of glucose to lactic acid is C6H12062CH3CHCOOH plus 2 ATP anaerobic respiration Anaerobic respiration is the process of respiration using an electron acceptor other than O2. In prokaryotes, multiple electron acceptors can be used in anaerobic respiration. These include nitrate, sulfate or carbon dioxide. These processes lead to the ecologically important processes of denitrification, sulfate reduction and acetogenesis, respectively. ATP replenishment by nucleoside diphosphate kinases ATP can also be synthesized through several so-called replenishment reactions catalyzed by the enzyme families of nucleoside diphosphate kinases, which use other nucleoside triphosphates as a high-energy phosphate donor, and the ATP guanidophosphotransferase family. ATP production during photosynthesis in plants. ATP is synthesized in thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast during the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis in a process called photophosphorylation. Here, light energy is used to pump protons across the chloroplast membrane. This produces a proton motive force and this drives the ATP synthase, exactly as in oxidative phosphorylation. Some of the ATP produced in the chloroplasts is consumed in the Calvin cycle, which produces triose sugars. ATP recycling The total quantity of ATP in the human body is about 0.2 mole. The majority of ATP is not usually synthesized de novo, but is generated from ADP by the aforementioned processes. Thus, at any given time, the total amount of ATP plus ADP remains fairly constant. The energy used by human cells requires the hydrolysis of 100 to 150 moles of ATP daily, which is around 50 to 75 kg. A human will typically use up his or her body weight of ATP over the course of the day. This means that each ATP molecule is recycled 500 to 750 times during a single day. ATP cannot be stored, hence its consumption closely follows its synthesis. However, a total of around 5 grams of ATP is used by cell processes at any time in the body. Regulation of Biosynthesis ATP production in an aerobic eukaryotic cell is tightly regulated by allosteric mechanisms, by feedback effects, and by the substrate concentration dependence of individual enzymes within the glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation pathways. Key control points occur in enzymatic reactions that are so energetically favorable that they are effectively irreversible under physiological conditions. In glycolysis, hexokinase is directly inhibited by its product, glucose 6-phosphate, and pyruvate kinase is inhibited by ATP itself. 
The main control point for the glycolytic pathway is phosphofructokinase, which is allosterically inhibited by high concentrations of ATP and activated by high concentrations of AMP. The inhibition of PFK by ATP is unusual, since ATP is also a substrate in the reaction catalyzed by PFK. The biologically active form of the enzyme is a tetramer that exists in two possible conformations, only one of which binds the second substrate fructose 6-phosphate. The protein has two binding sites for ATP. The active site is accessible in either protein conformation. But ATP binding to the inhibitor site stabilizes the conformation that binds F6P poorly. A number of other small molecules can compensate for the ATP-induced shift in equilibrium conformation and reactivate PFK, including cyclic AMP, ammonium ions, inorganic phosphate, and fructose 1, 6 and 2, 6 biphosphate. The citric acid cycle is regulated mainly by the availability of key substrates, particularly the ratio of NAD plus to NADH and the concentrations of calcium, inorganic phosphate, ATP, ADP, and AMP. Citrate, the molecule that gives its name to the cycle, is a feedback inhibitor of citrate synthase and also inhibits PFK, providing a direct link between the regulation of the citric acid cycle and glycolysis. In oxidative phosphorylation, the key control point is the reaction catalyzed by cytochrome C oxidase which is regulated by the availability of its substrate, the reduced form of cytochrome C. The amount of reduced cytochrome C available is directly related to the amounts of other substrates, which directly implies this equation. Thus, a high ratio of NADH2 NAD+, or a high ratio of ADP pi 2 ATP imply a high amount of reduced cytochrome C and a high level of cytochrome C oxidase activity. An additional level of regulation is introduced by the transport rates of ATP and NADH between the mitochondrial matrix and the cytoplasm.